Hello and welcome to the third installment of the CHCA podcast. I am Wasting Robin 586 here with Car Gamer 81 co and we have just come from the Temple Canyon Hill Climb in Canyon City, Colorado, and it was a fun it was a fun event and um, there were lots of people there. Um, but uh, how was your experience at the Temple Canyon Hill Climb? Um, so I actually had a really good time. I met a lot of cool people that I've only met through uh, internet and stuff. Um, it was really cool hanging out Saturday, just meeting people in the pits. Um, didn't really get to get up to really any good footage spots on Saturday, except for the starting line, which was really cool, actually. Um, and then Sunday, I went up to Checkpoint 8 and got some really good footage there. It was really awesome. Yeah, it was. Um, now, my experience, well, uh, we, we hung out sa Saturday, obviously. You were around and you were filming stuff, and I was in your vlog partially. But um, yeah. it, was an it was an interesting weekend. Um, first of all, we, we qualified P1 on Saturday, first overall, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of become a pattern as of late. Um, but after that, we uh, found out we had an issue with the transmission. And um, we've torn it down. We found there was a, a tooth missing in the pinion in the transmission. And it was making, so that's why it was making noise. And uh, if you would have went again, it probably would have went boom. And that would have been a whole mess. But um, yeah, we got to swap that out on Saturday and Sunday. And come Sunday, we ended up taking home the win, taking home the overall. Unfortunately, we didn't get come home with a record, though. I, I was kind of hoping for one of those this weekend, but the road wasn't there. So yeah, I had fun. <laughs> that's the main point. I had fun. <laughs> And I hope everyone else did. That's what it's too. all about, man. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so I have, I have a question for you. What did you think of the rally cars? Because I know that's not, you're not, not your there most some, favorite class, but I, there were some uh, fast guys there. Well, I mean, like, it's not a class I would do myself, but um, it, it is really awesome to watch them. And then the little number three rabbit, man, that would, it just kept me laughing all day long. <laughs> Well, at least it kept it kept you entertained. Um, well, uh, Friday's video on my channel, um, it it it, it was a really close finish, man. It was <laughs> it was kind of scary <laughs> but cool. Scary. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Um, huh? That's weird. Um, so let's start off with the rally turbo class. Jeff Register is continuing. I guess his dominance in CHCA, he ended up with a time of 3.16.50, which if you think about it, that's nuts. It's, he's in a rally car and he's doing that, especially with the two straightaways there. Um, and then, you know what? Not too far behind, James Koch. I, I don't know. Do I keep mispronouncing his name? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, he finished with a 3.23. So there is definitely some competition in that class. I am um, excited to watch it bloom as we move forward through the season. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, there were some really good rally cars. That number 15 uh, Subaru yeah, James was Coke. very impressive. Coke. Coke. Yep. Him? Yeah. Yep. I'll be French as a co-driver. Um, Brad Ames was doing really good. Um, I'm not sure if that's turbo rally class or not. But... No, it's not. That's two-wheel drive. Or four-wheel drive. Something like that. I don't know. I don't know. They did the, the thing weird. That black um, BMW. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about... This is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Well, there's three of them now. It's interesting. Um, but do you want to talk about the comp truck class a little bit? It was very interesting seeing uh, some very n new trucks. I mean, there was a lot of trucks this um, last race. That poor 76 Ford truck had, you know, a rough weekend. That's all I can say. And so did Tim <laughs> Walker. And but uh, overall, I, I was impressed. It was It was really awesome. Yeah, well, Dusty, Dustin McNeil took the win there with a 335-64. I expect him to be fast yeah, as, the season, as the season moves forward. Is all I can say is, you know, like the meme of your jaw dropping or the cartoon. That's kind of what it was like watching him all weekend. I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I, you know, the first, he used to race, um, champ cars, and, um, if you ever see a champ car go by, they're, they're all over the road, they can't keep them straight, and, um, as soon as he took off for his first run in that truck, it was like he was still in a champ car, because he was all over the road. 
Um, well, it's an aluminum chassis. Yeah. Uh, David Meyer, who was at Core in the Orange S10, he ended up finishing third with the 351.10, and uh, I heard he had some transmission issues, because he was, he was like at a 340-something on Saturday, so he definitely had some transmission issues on the first run and had to pack it up early, unfortunately. Same with Tim Walker, who um, I heard broke a transmission. Is that right? Transmission and a rear end on Saturday, so... That's that's racing for us. It seemed like everybody was having transmission issues this weekend. All right, but uh, yeah, let's... I went into his pit. Mhm. Mm yeah, you did. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, there was only one bolt holding the whole pumpkin together. Uh, <laughs> it looked like an S, kind of. <laughs> it's not a bolt should to look be like straight, that. but it looked like an S. <laughs> that's. <laughs> ah, he... I probably got a. That's funny. It's really funny, actually. Um, but yeah, there were five trucks in the competition truck class, so there were there were quite a few trucks there this weekend. Um, and moving on to Super Sprint, this was a close battle on Sunday on race day. I mean, we got three of the top or the top three competitors within a few tenths of each other. So that just shows that the competition is there for that um, class. Yeah, and I think it's a really cool class. Um, it it's probably pretty affordable um, because you can pretty much run whatever kind of V six or inline four boxer motor. Basically, yes, uh, six cylinders or less. Any of those. So I I think it's a really cool class because that shows the diversity of what everybody's running. You can tell the difference when a car's coming before you even see it. You're like. That's so and so, you know. Yep. Um, yeah, the winning time for that class was Jay Stewart with a three twenty five thirty five, and third place was Todd Cook with a three twenty five seventy three. That's only four tenths of a second. Or hunt, yeah, four tenths of a second. That's that's a really close race. That's like that's like getting on the gas pedal. Like I don't know. That's nuts. That's crazy. Um. It Mitch just comes Snow. to, you know... Comes to what? Racing. Yeah. Yes, that's what it does. Um, Mitch, <laughs> Mitch Snow, um, I was... He was doing pretty well at um, Core. Um, unfortunately, he got a... Well, from what Mark Wheeler said, a little over his head and uh, ended up rolling the car. I don't know. Have you seen that video? Um. Yeah, so uh, I did kind of see the car come back on the, you know... Yeah, it was in your video. Uh, rollback. And uh, it was uh, it was sad, but he get, I mean, like, it's fixable. It's nothing too bad, I think. Well, from what I, I from what I saw, the frame was kind of twisted. So I don't know. It, it's going to take oh. a, a fair amount of work, I think, to fix that. Oh. Because he, he, if you see I the video, he really rolled, tell, I guess, on the rollback. Because he, but... he hit the... He hit the rear left and it caught him and it sent him into the bank and then he rolled it i mean i don't know i, I didn't you could only see it from like the helmet cam so i didn't really see what was going on but yeah rodney and o'malley and earl o'malley were fighting up there they were only six and four seconds off the lead so it super spin is a really competitive class that's like really it's it's cheaper it's on the cheaper side to compete in yeah, I mean, even with Chris, you know, like, he's got uh, the Porsche car he's dealing with uh, for Pikes Peak. So, you know, he couldn't do uh, open comp this year. and Well, at least the first well, part. Maybe the first part of the lands year. in, yeah. Maybe Monarch. Yeah, he might have it done by Monarch. Maybe. Yeah, that's that's a few weeks. I think it could be done. We'll see. We'll see. But, I talked to him about it a little bit. He, Chris, said, he said, I got to make it through the peak first. Yeah, Chris had like some shifter issues, and something else I think happened to him too. So it's just part of racing. I mean, you're gonna break parts no matter what class you're in and what you do. I mean, unless you're running dirt bikes or quads, I guess dirt bikes and quads are probably the more reliable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably. 
Well, I, I don't really think there's any much anything else to talk about in Super Sprint. I mean, there was a lot of cars that showed up, and that was a good thing. That's good to have a good car count. But um, let's move into uh, stock car now. Um, your buddy Jimmy Ford ended up taking the win in that in that class. And in your videos, he yeah. is moving. He is moving in your videos. I mean, he he made my jaw drop. <laughs> um, Definitely uh, great cornering. Great footwork, you know, awesome, awesome job. And then Jeff Pierce ended up finishing second by literally three tenths of a second over John Dermis, the 19 uh, sportsman car or stock car, I guess it is, because it's in the stock car class. Um, they did a 340, 38, and a 340, 64. So Jimmy Ford was seven seconds ahead of uh, the second place car. Which I mean, it's still a competitive class, and they're, they're basically just sportsmen and competing in stock car. Well, that's actually and Schumacher what being back, you know. Well, Schumacher actually didn't get a clean run because he fin he didn't finish either of his runs, so that's unfortunate. But oh. sometimes sometimes the cookie crumbles that way. Because uh, yeah, I didn't see him in your first video, and I was like, "What's going on there?" So I guess I know now. Oh, he was no, he's he was in. Uh, he was in the sportsman. What, four. He was he he finished in the sportsman, but he didn't finish in stock car. Oh. Gotcha. I, I guess I didn't look at the times. And that was that was all that Stock Car had to offer for this weekend. And moving on to Pro Quad, that was a competitive class this weekend. I mean, I see, I see, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven quads within four seconds of each other. <laughs> right, and I got a quad that did a wheelie in my video. Oh, I saw that. That's that's Jerry Spin Spinachia. I, I'm sorry, I probably so mess that name up but the number 81 quad he, he did a good wheelie man that was <laughs> he did impressive i thought he that's if he held I it he would have gone that. over double thumbs up you know i was like that's awesome man let's see troy smith ended up winning it he did a 327 37 and kira gibson did it did finish second i'm sorry did it second finish second with the 328 81 uh, it's crazy to see some good competition in the pro quad, especially with a class that's, you know, eight or nine quads deep. Yeah, um, and, you know, I remember when Monarch started, there was probably about, God, 20, 20 quads. Yeah, it, it used felt to be like, that way. Maybe. Yeah, very competitive class, and it's, again, it's a cheaper class to enter, you know, you don't have to pay that much to go have some fun. Ons device. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay well with that said uh let's move into the exhibition class and what happened there um i think you know who won that <laughs> spencer spencer Steele got the, yeah i wonder spencer Steele got the win there but you know it wasn't it wasn't that anybody was that far behind because trevor stewart was that it was only three seconds back you know spencer did a 310 moving, man. spencer Steele did a 310 and trevor stewart did a 313 so that's only a three-second difference. And, I was impressed. And uh, Trevor Stewart's running like a stock LS, so he's he's probably only running like four or five hundred horsepower. So he's not running that much. He's yeah, he's definitely got that car figured out, man. Um, Troy Smith ended up finishing third in that. Or I'm sorry, not Troy Smith. Troy Smith ended up finishing fourth in that class with a 325, and Paul Dolenbach was third with a 323.02. Also, um, Chip Griffith, Chip, bleep, bleep. wow, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I did that, but Chip Griffith finished fifth in that class with his new car, the 76 Open Wheeler. Uh, what did you think of that car? That was pretty impressive too, yeah. <laughs> okay, but that was the exhibition class and, you know, they don't, I don't even think they get paid for that, but they still have to pay 150 bucks to enter. So it's basically, you're just giving 150 bucks to the uh, club just to race, race another run. Well, that was the exhibition class, and now let's move into the rally two-wheel drive class. Um, you said Grant Hughes in the in the Beamer finished, ended finishing up second with a excuse me, 349.13. And that Beamer that you liked, Brian McGuire, I think that's his, how you say his last name, and Josh McGuckin uh, ended up finishing fourth with a 359.37. Uh, that, was, the, it, that was that was the black beamer, the 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 old one. What about one. the rabbit? The rabbit, Mark Amsberg, 
He finished up with a 51775. <laughs> um but the king of the castle was Ryan McLaughlin and Andrew Miner, who ended up with a 33785. That's a that's a relatively quick time for a little two wheel drive rally car. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing like the the sportsman, but hey, that car is that Integra is pretty quick. The number one Integra. Well, yeah. I, I uh, wonder, you know, like if they're running DTEC. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> um. Uh, that's that's really all that Rally Two Wheel Drive held for us this this past weekend. But um, that wasn't all the classes that showed up. We had a few super stock trucks that uh, showed up. Well, Brian Packard ended up winning that race with a oh that was a close race. He did a three thirty nine thirty seven, and his kid Levi Packard, who I predicted to win the whole thing this season, was a three thirty nine ninety two, and that was the run he caught on fire. Did you see the pictures of that? <laughs> I haven't seen the pictures, but I heard about it from. He caught his truck on fire, and he almost beat it. And he almost won with his truck on fire. That's that's awesome, dude. <laughs> well, that's awesome. see, I even slowed down my videos to see if I could see any flame or anything, and I couldn't see anything from my point of view. I I don't think so, it happened until like know. checkpoint nine. So I, I think I it know. was after you. I was impressed. He was doing really good, especially for a new truck and everything. I think that is um, um, Tim Walker Jr.'s old truck. Because he used to race that, that like same body style truck. I think it is. I think it's right. Tim Walker Jr.'s old truck. And Jonathan Meyer, who didn't get a, end up getting a run because his transmission broke on the first one. As we saw on your video. Yep. Okay. Um, after Super Stock Truck, it was open competition. And... We know who won that. <laughs> uh, Spencer Steele with a 312.37. And that's moving. I mean, think about it. Would, could, could you go that fast up that hill? Um, Not in my uh, Camaro, no. I don't think so. Well, if you had, maybe if you had the right road, you could get down there. But I don't know. That'd be pretty hard. It's That's moving. Because he, in your video, we saw he hit 131 along that front stretch. And I know Trevor Stewart was doing about 120 along that for that start street. So I mean, there's, there's, they're not going very slow. <laughs> not one bit. And uh, well, anyways, Trevor Stewart finished with a 58. There's 518. Geez, 318. And Paul Dolomek was at a 319. So it's a very competitive class. Uh, you know, the top three guys within seven seconds of each other. I mean that's the usually when it's that way that's a that's a good good competitive class, and um, honestly I was really impressed with Chip Griffith this weekend. He has a brand new car, you know, feeling things out, and he he did relatively well for for not knowing the car really. Well, that was the open competition class, and um, let's move on to the sportsman class, your favorite class, the car that you have a car for, and I have one question for you. Are we going to see you at Land's End driving? Um, unfortunately, my helmet and safety equipment will probably not be ready by then. But your car will be. Is that, is, is that what you're saying? I, it probably will be. but Probably. It's, it's hard to say. I still got stuff to do to my T-top car. Um, okay, since if we won't see you at, core, at Land's End, would we see you at core driving? This year? No. Yeah. No? You're just going to wait till Maybe next year? Maybe next year. Yeah, I, I got to get sponsors squared away and other things, so. Okay, well, uh, let's let's get back to the actual things that happened this weekend. Um, Jimmy Ford won again, your buddy. <laughs> and um, yep. He finished with a 332.18, which was actually faster than his stock car time. So we kept getting faster uh, every run um, of the weekend. And Justin Schumacher was second with a 335. So that's a three-second difference. That's, uh, that's, a re that's a pretty close race, if you think about it. Yep. It was, it was really impressive watching everybody run. Um, number tw 26, you know, he... Jeff Pierce. Had a... 
flat tire on the uh, split first run. two, which was the first run of the Sportsman's, and and he had a wild ride. From <laughs> what I understood, he had a wild ride. Yeah, and uh, your bud Jason Ritchie, he ended up with a 402. Um, yep. Just filling not... out the car, man. I, yeah, that's as he say, uh, I... said. You know, like the car's got more than he can drive right now. More car like, than he's... skill. Well, I don't know about skill, but you know, more it takes car time than and it takes practice. That's what Chip Griffith said too. He said that I've got way more car than driver. But that was the, that was the sportsman class. Um, on to the third class, which is third sorry third rally class, not the third class. Uh, rally light, which only had three cars in it. Um, I know you're a little confused on this, but CHCA went to three rally classes this year, so we have rally four wheel drive turbo, rally two wheel drive. I wasn't the only one confused. I I know I know you aren't, <laughs> but yeah we have rally four wheel drive turbo rally two wheel drive and rally light which is all wheel is four wheel drive or all wheel drive without turbo, so the times will be a little slower than the rally four wheel drive turbo class which um, Steve Biss ended up winning uh, with a three thirty one sixty nine. Um, moving forward I'm not sure I think they should have done this as a trial run like. A year period where if they have to have a certain amount of cars show up for that class to keep it like moving forward to the next year because I don't know three cars in, in that class eh, we could just put them in the rally four-wheel drive class and have a bigger class count or bigger car count for the class I don't know what do you think about that class you know like you said they're running without turbo so it does make sense um, you know champs there's only two champs so I, I don't yeah, really I think it's that. about the numbers of class per cars, really. Okay. Well, I, I mean, it makes sense, but I just don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Speaking of champ, champ cars, um, we had two, two old guys, or guys that used to do it with us, show up. Uh, Brian Hardman and Kobe Pierce. Brian Hardman was the 27 champ car, and Kobe Pierce was the 29. The 29 champ car had Kobe Pierce had a, a little incident on Saturday. Um, I know you documented it a little bit with um, your yeah. blog. Yeah. As um, I explained to a lot of people that didn't get to make it to the event here in Salida, um, I said, you know, those cars are meant to roll. So once he started rolling, it was, you know, let's just yeah. put those cars too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they got it back together. And he ended up finishing yeah, yeah. second in class. He was um, safe. Everything was all all good. Yep, he finished with a 336. And Brian Hardman's at a 331. It was good to see them out there. I know that they said that they wouldn't have been there if their sprint car race hadn't been canceled because they, they do sprint car races around Colorado and surrounding states. So, if the, I mean, I'm glad they showed up. I'm glad, kind of glad that sprint car race got canceled just to see some champ cars out there going at it. It's a fun class to watch. Um, after the champ class, we had the motorcycle class, which uh, Travis Newbold ended up winning, who, my prediction at the beginning of the season, I said he was probably going to win the points if he showed up to every event, and so far he's keeping that promise. Uh, he ended up getting a new record with a 336-33. Um, could you think about that? He did a 336 on a motorcycle. Um, I mean, like, a good rider knows his terrain and knows how to handle his corners man I'm, I'm a dirt biker myself so i love watching the dirt bikes um yeah they're they're a fun class to watch definitely um a buddy of mine donner billingsley ended up finishing third in that class and the and the green kawasaki the old one that uh, 500 cc two-stroke uh he did a 406 47 that's and you know he hasn't ridden that bike in a year so Getting third in, a, in an event like this, that's pretty good, in my opinion. That was a really cool bike, man. I like old school bikes. <laughs> yeah, you're an old school guy. <laughs> 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 um, but that, that 27, the I think it was it a Honda? The really old bike. Um, the four-stroke. I. That's what uh, it looked like. I think, I'm pretty sure that was a Honda. Yeah, I thought it was too. We did a 409 
26 and ended up finishing fifth in that class. That was the motorcycle class, but before we go any further, I want to mention the uh, rally car, the rally light car, uh, the 194, David Brown and Michael Brown. Uh, Michael Brown is a co-driver. If you haven't seen the video, it was going through Facebook or it's on YouTube, I, I can't remember which, but they had a little incident and uh, the co-driver ended up having some um, compression fractures and had to end up going to the hospital. Um, uh, we, we hope he can get a speedy recovery and yeah, do you have anything to say on that, uh, your account? I just wish the team luck and, uh, you know, it, it sucks to see something like that happen, but, uh, I mean, it happens in racing a lot, no matter what class or what kind of racing. Um, I mean, like not a lot, but I mean, when it does happen, it, it sucks. So, yeah. you know. I yeah. wish them all luck. Yeah, definitely. I yeah, hope to see him, see him back out there on the course soon. Before we talk a little bit about Monarch, um, I just want to talk a little bit more about Temple and and see, you know, who was your favorite driver from Temple Canyon? Who impressed you the most? You know, I'm curious. I wanted to see because you 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 were able to go up the hill and you know see the the cars actually go through the course, whereas I was kind of stuck in the pit. So I'm curious who who really impressed you out on the mountain this weekend. Actually, everybody impressed me. I can't say there was a single one that I wasn't impressed with, um, no matter which class. I mean, I was just like, everybody, by, you know, their Sunday runs, felt out the track. You know, it was it was a great Sunday. Um, Saturday, you know, it's always practice day. There's going to be craziness. So, I mean, like, especially, you know, what am I going to be like next next year at Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um so you know i respect everybody out on that track and um everybody did a great job it sucks to see you know cars get broken or you know any kind of wrecks or anything like that but it is part of racing and um i'm really excited to see monarch you know like there's going to be a lot of good possibility that i could get a car meet going for that um, but I still got to talk to the owner of Wallbangers. What is that? Could you could you describe that for us? Um, it's a sports bar and grill. They got like a little arcade, um, a bar, great food, um, and the biggest parking lot that I can find really in Salida. <laughs> <laughs> Night. Um. Well, that's a good thing. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to make it. We're we're kind of time crunched because we're doing some other other events but um my takeaways from temple um spencer kept his dominance i guess the chda that's he's going for a third championship i keep saying that but you know jimmy ford really impressed me uh we we saw justin schumacher come out and he, he used to be the fast guy in chda i think he even beat mike mcgee a couple times but he was he i was expecting him to win but jimmy ford you know he really surprised me and he came out and he won and uh that was really impressive to me well even in one of my videos the 19 camaro um G black uh, camaro man he was what's his name he was bouncing that front end so john that dermis was, I can't that's his name john dermis but ah but either way man like that car is pretty set up and i like i like the way he's got that car set up yeah, he looks pretty fast. I think with some more, because that's only this is only his. I believe it's only his second or third year. I can't remember. I think it's only his. It's his third year. I mean, it's only his third year, so he he should be getting faster. And I think he is. He definitely is. So I'm excited to see his potential as we move forward um, in the coming years. Well, uh, that's really all we all you have to say about Temple Canyon. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of a Monarch preview. So Monarch is, I think, the highest hill climb we have, like in elevation. Um, Pits are like at ten thousand feet or probably, something like that. Um, incline too. I mean, for as short as it is, yeah, it's, it's a steep pretty sucker. steep all the way up. Um, I know. Uh, you know, looking into predictions for this, Chris Drouch is going to be fast. He's always fast at Monarch. I don't know for whatever reason he just he he figures it out. He's figured it out, and he's he's got the course down, and he's he's just a fast guy up there. So that'd be that'd be my guy to watch for a Monarch. Um, who are you, who are you going to watch yeah. for? 
Um, everybody? Everybody? <laughs> um, no, I was just thinking a couple days ago, like, when I used to run that in, when I was, you know, in high school and stuff, um, when the race wasn't going on, and I had a stock transmission and a pretty decent 400 horsepower or so small block Chevy in my truck, four wheel drive Chevy truck. And I'd run that thing, but I'll tell you, the incline in that track is so hard on your transmission and parts that, I mean, it's a tough track. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, we have some history on that, and we, we got some unfinished business. Last year, um, we were, we ended up, on the first run, we were ahead by Chris Jouch by like a second. And Paul Dollenbach was there, because Chris Jouch has his V8 car a lot there last year. And Paul Dollenbach was there like three seconds back or so. And that was after the first run. And on the second run, Paul Dollenbach came out and he beat us by two tenths of a second in the open competition class. <laughs> that's 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 Damn. like that's like lifting off too soon. Literally, that's it. So we have some unfinished business there, trying to get a win back. Get back in the win column there. <laughs> So, hopefully that can happen. I know Trevor Stewart's going to be there, and it's going to be hard to beat. It's going to be hard to beat these guys. Um, there's some great competition in every class. I mean, we saw we saw the Super Sprint class with the really close times. The Quad class was close times. You know, every class had close times, and I, and that's what you like to see. You like to see competition at these events. You don't you know you don't just want to see one guy beating everybody. Yep, agreed. Okay, well, um, hopefully you get this uh, thing in Salida figured out. We'll try to make it. Like I said, we got some other things going on, but um, we'll let everybody know through Facebook yeah, it, and, and that, right? Right. Um, yeah, if it, if it doesn't work out this year, um, I will definitely try to do my best to make something happen next year for Monarch's race in Salida. That sounds like a plan. Well, um, I think that is going to do it for us today. Um, for Wasting Robin 586 and Cargamer 81CO. We hope to see you at Monarch and then the next podcast after that. Yep, you guys have a good one. See ya. <laughs>